So hello once again. I see many familiar names, uh, so I'm just going to get started with a few procedural things. Um, this is a pre-recorded webinar followed by the opportunity for questions and answers. A couple of things that uh, are more on the logistics side. Uh, we are joined today by our uh, partners at NIH uh, from the Genome Institute. It's me and Valentina Di Francesco but we have our colleagues from the National Institute of Minority Health and Health Disparities, the NIH Office of Data Science Strategy, and the All of Us Research Program. So really welcome uh, on behalf of all of my NIH colleagues. Uh, this is a true partnership uh, across many parts of NIH to increase the diversity of the genomics and data science workforce. Uh, we will be allowing questions to be submitted via the Q&A button, which you see at the bottom of your screen. Uh, there is also the opportunity for you to raise your hand if you would like to speak uh, rather than type in your question. So basically, in a few minutes, uh, we will get started with the webinar piece of this, which, as I mentioned, has already been recorded. Once that ends, we will open it up. Uh, the questions will turn up on our end. My colleague, Helen Thompson, will uh, help me make sure that every question gets answered. Uh, many of my colleagues from the other NIH partners are here as well. Uh, we, we will probably join forces in answering some questions. Once again, I really cannot emphasize how much it means to us that you are interested in this funding opportunity. This is something we are tremendously excited about. Thank you for making time. If a question doesn't get answered today, me or one of my colleagues are committed to getting back to you by email or phone call later on. Uh, so please feel free to send me the question in the email. That is, uh, my email address is on the funding announcement. But once again, we do hope that we have uh, enough time to answer everyone's questions today in the last 30 minutes or so that's set aside. Uh, so what I'm going to do without further ado is to ask my colleague Jail Somani to get started with the webinar. And afterwards, as I mentioned, we will switch to live Q&A with all of you. Thank you once again for joining. Uh, Jail, over to you. Good afternoon. Welcome to the pre-application webinar for the Educational Hub for Enhancing Diversity in Computational Genomics and Data Science. My name is Shurjo Sen. I am a program officer with NHGRI. And on behalf of my NIH colleagues, uh, thank you for making time to join us today. Let me tell you a bit about what will happen on the webinar today. Uh, I am being assisted uh, by Gerald Somani, Alvaro Encinas, and Helen Thompson, who will help me with AB and making sure all the questions that come in get answered. Uh, for the first part of the webinar, we will talk about the hub, and then we will open it up to live questions and answers uh, with me and others from NIH. Uh, please put all of your questions in the Q&A box on Zoom. We do not have an audio connection for this uh, for participants. You are allowed to submit your questions anonymously. Uh, we will be disabling the chat so I can answer all of your questions live. Uh, your questions, whether or not we have time on the webinar to answer them will get converted into text form and we will be uh, updating a FAQ page with all of the answers to any questions sent to us today. And we will send out a link to that FAQ page uh, after the event is over. And finally, this webinar will be recorded and the recording will be available on the web page uh, for you to share with any of your colleagues who may not be able to join us today. So just before we get too deep into this, I would like to share some links and these slides uh, will all be made available uh, for you to browse the links later on. At the top is the link for the funding announcement itself for the hub that I mentioned. Uh, I would like to highlight a really important notice of participation, which is in the second bullet. That notice is either live or just about to go live. Uh, and it highlights the partnerships that we have built with other NIH institutes who have a, a shared interest in the work that the hub will do. So we will uh, once again send out that link as and when that notice becomes live. The rest of the links I invite you to browse through. They contain much more information about the strategic vision and the diversity action plan that our institute has, all of which provide a background and context for the work that this hub will do. 
So over the next 15 or 20 minutes, I will give you some background and purpose for the hub. Uh, I will describe along with my colleagues, uh, the NIH partners uh, of the NAGRI who will fund the hub together with my institute. Uh, I will describe the programmatic approach being taken for the work that we envision being done by the hub. And then we will cover the application process and finally hopefully have at least 30 minutes of the hour left for me to answer questions uh, together with others. So really the background here is genomics and data science are both fields that are in an active state of uh, research. They are both in the middle of their own revolutions, one might say. But it is true that educational opportunities in either of these fields or in that intersectional zone that we call genomic data science are unfortunately not really available across the nation in all of the classrooms that we would like to see them be available at. Through work that NAGRI has done uh, in a pilot project called the Genomic Data Science Community Network, we have been engaging faculty and asking what would it take for you to teach uh, genomics or data science in a historically black college setting, in a community college setting, in a Hispanic serving institution, and really, we have heard two prominent themes in, in why it is challenging to teach these topics to students from underrepresented minority backgrounds. The first of these is a lack of access to computing resources and data sets that would be needed for effective teaching. The second is a lack of expertise that combines either genomics with data science or a biology faculty member having exposure to genomics or someone that is a biology teacher who would like to teach data science but is not trained in statistics. So really it's a mix of these two things that forms the background for everything that we set out to do. And the purpose of the hub, uh, the current funding announcement that we are talking about is to leverage cloud computing as a tool for mending this disparity. And the Anvil cloud platform, which NAGRI supports together with other NIH cloud platforms are really hoping to come together to enhance the diversity of students who will have access to educational opportunities in data science, in genomics, and at that intersection of both. Uh, for this work with this particular funding announcement, we are also focusing on the undergraduate and master's degree levels. So I would like to emphasize that the work being done here is a partnership across many parts of NIH. The National Human Genome Research Institute or NAGRI is where I work and uh, others that are part of the team here. But really important to keep in mind that as I will describe in the next few slides, we have partners from multiple other NIH uh, institutes. We have NIMHD, the National Institute on Minority Health, and health disparities, the NIH Office of Data Science Strategy, and the All of Us Research Program, each of whom will tell you more about what they would like to see done through the hub. And many of the members from these partners are also here to help me answer questions. So let me first talk about NHGRI and the purpose and context for why my institute or our institute is interested in this. In 2020, NAGRI published the strategic vision for the next 10 years of genomics. Uh, this is a document that sort of lays out where we would like to see genomics as a field go over the next decade. And really, I will point out two parts of this. Number one, that genomic data science is being emphasized as something where the future scientist in genomics is, need to, is going to need data science training from a very early stage of their careers. And at the same time, we are emphasizing training and workforce development in the sense of saying that for genomics to grow, we need to definitely be supporting workforce development that is collecting students from all across the country, from all segments of society. Together with the strategic vision, we also published the NHGRI diversity action agenda. And both of these are links in that slide I showed a few minutes ago. And goal two in the action agenda is sort of highlighting the point that we need to start early for developing diversity in the genomics workforce. We need to start connecting with students at the undergraduate and master's levels to bring them in. So this forms the NAGRI context for the work uh, being planned for the hub. 
And in support of that objective, I would like to list here a wide range of funding opportunities that NAGRI has put out to help uh, investigators and students and postdocs uh, come in and join the genomics workforce from different sorts of institutions. The full version of this list is available uh, at the link at the bottom of the slide. But I, I really want to point out that within this, we have the scope for all career stages from pre-doctoral students to established investigators to come join the genomics workforce, even if they were not doing genomics and were practicing data scientists who are interested in genomics, such as our R25 uh, funding announcement. But really, I would encourage anyone on this webinar as a follow-up to also go back and look at everything that we are funding as a way of diversifying the genomics workforce. Uh, with that, I'm going to pass it on to my colleague Ashante, who will tell you about the All of Us uh, research program and their interest in the work being done by the Hub. Thank you, Sergio. I know some of you may be familiar with the All of Us research program, but just in case you haven't yet met the drive, mission, and the movement that is All of Us, I'll take a brief moment for us to get better acquainted. The All of Us Research Program is designed to bring together 1 million or more volunteers from across the United States to donate health information for research. When we achieve our goal, our program will be one of the largest and certainly most diverse data sets in the nation. Our mission, pictured here, is to accelerate health research and medical breakthroughs, enabling individualized prevention treatment and care for all of us. And we have three objectives guiding us in this mission, including nurturing relationships with a million or more participants, delivering the largest and most diverse biomedical data set ever, and catalyzing a robust ecosystem of communities, researchers, and funders. When our program committed to the name All of Us, we did so intentionally knowing that this is and will remain a research program for each and every one of us. And if our name didn't shout it loudly enough already, our commitment to participant diversity, as well as research diversity, is of the utmost importance. Since the start of our program in 2018, we have been honored to enroll more than 500,000 participants, myself included, who have completed the initial steps of the program with nearly 50% from racial or ethnic minority populations as defined by the US Census, and approximately 80% of whom are individuals who have been historically underrepresented in biomedical research. This category includes people from racial and ethnic minority groups, sexual and gender minority groups, children and older adults, individuals with disabilities, individuals with barriers to accessing care, individuals with lower incomes or limited educational attainment, and residents of rural areas. As we see on this slide, the program invests in a variety of different data types, including surveys, polling on items such as social determinants of health, lifestyle, access to care, medical history, and more. There's even a survey where we polled nearly 100,000 participants on their experiences during the COVID-19 pandemic. In addition to these surveys, we also collect physical measurements like blood pressure, heart rate, and BMI, data from electronic health records, which are standardized to the OMOP common data model, whole genome sequences, and more than 165,000 genotyping arrays. And we also include data from wearables like Fitbit, collecting data about our participating partners' physical activity and fitness journeys. All of this data and more is available through the All of Us Research Hub, in which there are three tiers holding three different levels of data. We have our public tier, which contains only anonymized aggregate data, our registered tier, which one can gain access to once their affiliated institution has established a data use agreement, or DURA, with the program. This registered level allows access to curated anonymized individual level data where researchers can create a workspace, build their cohort, build the data set, 
and use the R and Python programming languages to conduct their statistical analyses. And last but certainly not least is our control tier, which is a step deeper than our registered tier and requires additional approvals and trainings from both the institutional and individual researcher side. Researchers who access this control tier level will be able to see genomic data and additional clinical fields in the EHR records, as well as additional demographic data from surveys that were suppressed or generalized in the register tier. All in all, there is data that's relevant for all of us in the All of Us Research Hub. And with this latest funding opportunity, Educational Hub for Enhancing Diversity in Computational Genomics and Data Science, I passionately encourage you to consider applying. The uniqueness and diversity of the All of Us data set provides student trainees studying computational genomics and data science and their faculty mentors an unprecedented opportunity to begin addressing complex questions in genomics while also investigating the intersectionality of how social determinants of health impact health inequities. The time is now and the opportunity is here. We look forward to having you aboard the All of Us Research Program. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I will move on and tell you about the next partner um, who will be co-funding the hub. This is NIMHD, the National Institute for Minority Health and Health Disparities. NIMHD's mission is to lead scientific research to improve minority health and reduce health disparities. To accomplish this, the Institute plans, coordinates, reviews, and evaluates NIH minority health and health disparities research and activities. It conducts and supports research in minority health and health disparities. It promotes and supports the training of a diverse research workforce, and it translates and disseminates research information. Finally, it also fosters and innovates collaborations and partnerships in support of the above goals. And my colleagues from NIMHD are with us today and can tell you more about work they would like to see done. And together with uh, all of us and NIMHD, I'm also happy that the NIH Office of Data Science and Strategy is a partner for the hub. ODSS uh, is the acronym for that office. ODSS leads implementation of the NIH strategic plan for data science through scientific, technical, and operational collaboration with the institutes, centers, and offices that comprise NIH. The ODSS mission is to catalyze new capabilities in biomedical data science by providing trans-NIH leadership and coordination for modernization of the NIH data resource ecosystem. Together with development of a diverse and talented data science workforce and building strategic partnerships to develop and disseminate advanced technologies and methods. So as you uh, realize, there are many different parts of NIH who are all coming together for this. And for that, I think we will have a really broad scope of activities that will be considered in scope for the hub. So I'm going to tell you now more about the programmatic approach uh, that uh, is being planned for not just the hub, for, but for another funding opportunity as well that uh, would be intricately linked to the work being done by the hub. So today we are talking about RFA HG22002, uh, which is the funding announcement for the hub itself, which is now published. And of course, uh, you know, potentially uh, all of you are interested in applying for. What I want to point out is that the hub does not exist in isolation as, uh, as we have put out in a concept clearance a few months ago. Early next year, we will be publishing a second funding announcement that we will refer to here as the sites. And the sites are actually being planned to be minority serving institutions who will develop content for teaching computational genomics or data science. And the hub and the sites will work together to create a network of support for getting students across the country from minority backgrounds uh, into a place where they can access cloud computing, data science, and genomics. So while I talk about the hub today, I will emphasize or refer to the sites at multiple times, because as I said, the hub and the sites are really two, uh, two weapons in our arsenal, so to say, to address the dis disparities that we see now. So, the really important thing here is that the programmatic 
approach for the hub is something that I would like to clarify and help understand because this is um, in some ways a new approach towards um, education that we are trying here, especially with the use of cloud computing. The best way to think about the hub is as a facilitator slash coordinator for cloud-based education in computational genomics and data science. Some of the early work will be engaging the stakeholders, uh, all of the institutions that would like to teach these topics, but maybe have not been able to up to this point and say, what would it take for you to be able to do this? And uh, the other part of that is that the hub would need to go out and connect with these locations, with these faculty and host seminars and workshops that introduce genomics uh, to let's say a mathematics department at an institution that has not worked in genomics before, or maybe introduce cloud computing to students who have heard of Google Cloud or Amazon, but have not worked in a cloud environment before. So really there are multiple things that will need to happen at the early stages. There is engaging these stakeholders, there is uh, hosting awareness exercises where the concepts and the terms are introduced to them. And also at the same time, we would like to hear through the hub what challenges and obstacles are faced by faculty and students at these colleges. So the hub will be collecting feedback and distilling it into a form that we can we here at NIH can use to design uh, future activities. Uh, also, the work of the hub will include train the trainer activity, where, as I mentioned during the site's uh, funding announcement, minority serving institutions will develop content, but the hub really should be the entity collecting faculty members and saying, we will empower you to teach these topics. And not only that, we will also empower you to go back and talk to your fellow faculty. And if they would like to teach it, we will provide you with the material that you can share with them as a way of increasing the number of faculty members who can teach topics in data science and genomics. Uh, really in this way, we, we hope that a much broader spectrum of institutions than the awardees for the hub and the sites alone will benefit from all of the work being done here. Uh, finally, there is a plan for the hub to support research, independent research at the sites. And I'll talk more about that. Uh, and finally, I will remind everyone once again that uh, it's not just genomics, uh, data science as a standalone topic, minority health uh, research. There are many other topics that are in scope for the hub as the other NIH partners uh, are also joining us to extend this beyond pure genomic data science alone. So a little bit more about uh, how the hub will function. This is a U24 cooperative agreement mechanism. What that means is that NIH program staff, such as myself and other uh, program directors from the other partners will be in very frequent contact with the hub awardee. We will work uh, on a regular basis to make sure that NIH objectives are in line with the work being done by the hub. Uh, the funding itself is $1.5 million in total costs for the first three years, uh, going up to $1.8 million for the last two years uh, when those opportunity funds for research at the sites start to kick in. And once again, I'll describe uh, that in more detail in a second. In some ways, the point of the hub would be to create a pool of competitive applicants uh, for the eventual site's funding announcement, which as I mentioned, will come out sometime early next year. And really the thing to keep in mind is that many of the sites uh, may not have applied for NIH funding before. So the hub does have the mandate to help such institutions uh, become competitive applicants for NIH funding. Uh, it will also organize an annual programmatic meeting uh, bringing together not just the hub staff and interested stakeholders, but also NIH attendees, eventually when we award the sites, uh, you know, faculty members at the sites. So really that meeting could be a community gathering of sorts for education in data science and in genomics. And finally, as mentioned in the RFA, the hub will need to convene a scientific experts group or SEG that brings an outside voice of objectivity and consults on the progress and priorities of the hub. So I would like to describe next the opportunity funds. Uh, this is something that we really feel is important because genomics and data science are best learned 
as hands-on activities and not just as something that is a, a series of classroom lectures. We have built into the hub the possibility for sites to receive up to $50,000 in awards for independent research projects. And these would be uh, administered or these would be uh, conducted by faculty members at the sites and they would develop proposals for independent projects in genomics, in data science, and really the hub needs to be the administrator of this program. So in, uh, in your applications, please find a way to give us ideas for how this could happen. Remembering that any data that comes out of these projects will eventually be put on the cloud so that students, not just at that institution, but across the country could potentially conduct student research projects uh, using, using the data from these uh, opportunity funds. So really include as, a, as we've asked for in the RFA, a proposal with the administ administrative structure, how proposals would get solicited, reviewed, uh, how funds would be dispersed and how progress would be monitored. This is an exciting uh, opportunity for minority serving institutions to develop their own research programs. And the hub will be our, our go-to group for making sure that this gets off the ground correctly. So this is uh, something that I will encourage you to get creative about in your applications. So a little bit about the timeline. Uh, the hub is getting funded sometime around spring of next year. Uh, your, the due date for applications is July 27th. Uh, it will be reviewed in the fall. Uh, will be taken to NHGRI's council uh, in February next year. And hopefully by May, June, uh, thereabouts of next year, we will be able to issue the awards. The hub will have two years uh, to engage and prepare uh, the sites applicants. Uh, and then towards the last three years, it will move into that community organizer role of supporting the sites, integrating all of the content being built, uh, sharing it, and also evaluating the program as a whole and how it worked. Together with this, the sites funding announcement uh, should hopefully be coming out early next year uh, with uh, awards sometime around the fall of next year. And we plan on two cohorts for the sites. So um, in total, maybe somewhere between eight and 10 sites awards, who uh, each of whom will have three years of funding and will work with the hub closely. So really, once again, this is uh, being envisioned as a community of awardees with one hub and many sites uh, together with NIH forming an educational community of sorts. So let's talk about the application process. Uh, I always, always uh, encourage anyone to contact me, uh, send me your specific aims, uh, send me any questions you have. Really, it works well for the applicant and for NIH if there is prior communication with the program officer, in this case me, uh, before you decide to submit your applications. Uh, please follow closely all of the instructions in the SF424 application guide. Uh, the main body of the application is described in the funding announcement. Uh, once again, you can send me any questions. And please, 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 I know you all do this, but please read the RFA carefully uh, so that everything that we have in there as a mandatory requirement uh, is included in your final application. Uh, let me highlight a few of these as being particularly crucial. We are asking for many things uh, within the application itself, uh, each of which has its own important role. The three I would really like to emphasize are the plan for enhancing diverse perspectives, uh, the plan for instruction in responsible conduct of research and an evaluation plan. Uh, all of these are described in detail in the RFA, but without any of these, the application will get withdrawn and will not get reviewed. And it is a very painful experience for me as a program director to have to tell an applicant uh, that their application is being withdrawn. So please, please, please make sure that all of these are included. As well, a resource sharing plan, a leadership and project management plan, a dissemination plan, and letters of support. So once again, all of these form important pieces of what we hope the reviewers will read uh, as, as they uh, get into the process of giving feedback to NIH. So relevant deadlines, uh, the deadline for a letter of intent was uh, last week, but this is not a, a non-binding Oh, I'm sorry, it wasn't last week, it was June 27th, and webinar is July 6th. Um, the, it was not a binding requirement, so you are welcome to apply, even if you did not submit a letter of intent. The application due date is July 27th. 
once again, if there is one message I would like to pass on, it is please do not wait until the last day. We have every year the painful experience of working with people who had a system error, an internet outage the day before the deadline. If at all possible, please go ahead and submit as many days as you can before the July 27 deadline. If you have last minute errors, uh, contact the ERA service desk. Uh, this is not something that as a program director, I have any ability to help with, but I can contact ERA and make them aware that an applicant is having uh, difficulty submitting. But once again, if there's anything that helps here, it is waiting, uh, it is not waiting, I should say, un until the day of the deadline to submit your application. So piece of advice over there. Uh, the review and selection process, uh, the, all applications will be reviewed by a special emphasis panel convened by NAGRI. Uh, the review scores will be taken to NAGRI's council uh, uh, together with the recommendation from program staff uh, as to which applications would be our first decisions for funding. Uh, once again, funding decisions are based not just on the score alone, but also on how much funding we have available in a particular year how relevant a particular application is <clears throat> to what we would like to see done through the hub. So basically um, it is something that council gives us input on once review is done. So finally, before we turn it over to Q&A, since many of you have sent questions over the last few weeks, I thought I would quickly run through some of the more frequent ones uh, so that you have answers to begin with. I get asked commonly, does the hub applicant itself have to be a minority serving institution? The answer is no, it does not, but we hope that you will consider a partnership with MSIs as a way of building a team which brings uh, an added level of diversity to the eventual hub awardee. But there is no hard requirement that the hub applicant has to have MSI status themselves. Uh, next question, what background will the students have that the hub will work with? Really, it could be anything here. It could be mathematics students, it could be computer science students, it could be biology students, it could be students in departments that have an existing genomics or data science uh, uh, faculty awareness. But really the thing to do here would be to not assume any prior knowledge. We want every student at a minority serving institution or a smaller college to have a low barrier for entry into data science and into genomics. So please assume that your students are coming in not knowing a whole lot about these topics. Uh, next question, will the hub develop classroom teaching content? As I mentioned, the sites is really the funding announcement that will be tailored towards semester length educational content being developed by faculty at MSIs. The hub will of course develop content in the form of workshops and seminars but we don't envision the hub itself uh, creating semester length classroom courses in the traditional sense. Uh, next question, who will provide cloud computing costs for this work? Uh, please include any anticipated costs in your budgets. NIH will attempt to support or provide discounts to the strides program for any cloud computing that will be done by the hub but we would like to see an estimate for these costs in your budget so that if needed, we can build it into the award. Uh, and finally, will the hub be helping with sites applicants? The answer there is yes. Uh, we expect the hub to host, for example, workshops on writing NIH grants. Uh, but on the other hand, we don't expect that the hub will spend a lot of time creating a particular sites application with an applicant. But at the same time, we hope that the hub will help with some level of competitiveness for NIH funding, even if it doesn't um, find itself putting a lot of time into an individual application. We, we do want to create a pool of good applicants for the sites funding announcement. So with that, I'm going to close out the webinar. Uh, thank you once again for joining me and I, me and my colleagues from all of the NIH institutes are happy to take your questions. So, Thank you, really. I see a lot of questions have already been coming in through the Q&A, and I interpret that as uh, the attendees here sharing our enthusiasm for the work being done. Uh, many of these questions, me and my colleagues have already tried to answer. I'm going to hand it over to uh, Helen Thompson from our, our team, who will walk me through uh, each question in roughly in the order that they were submitted 
uh, once again, if we miss a question today, uh, I definitely plan on providing typed uh, answers in an FAQ page uh, that we will put up uh, on the webinar website uh, by this time next week, I would say roughly. But if you don't have an answer in the next week or 10 days latest, you are welcome at any time to contact me. And if the question involves one of the partners, uh, all of us, ODSS or NIMHD, I am happy to pass that on to the people uh, from, from that IC or that office. So Helen, over to you. Uh, I see we have at this point four open questions. Yes. Uh, so Sharjo, it looks like the first question that has not already been answered in the chat is asking for some more guidance on your expectations for the Opportunity Funds program. Um, specifically, does NHGRI have final approval for all Opportunity Funds? And will those funds be distributed by the hub and included on the hub budget or directly distributed by any NIH to the target institutions? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. So number one, the hub is the administrator for that program. So the funds will be going from NIH to the hub, but the final administration of those opportunity funds is something that the hub will be uh, responsible for. In terms of uh, how that opportunity gets structured, uh, you know, when we write funding announcements, I was, um, the, the people I learned it from I have always emphasized that be open to ideas. So we didn't want to get too specific. Uh, I hope that we have enough information there to convey the general purpose that these opportunity funds uh, should be a way for students and faculty at these smaller institutions to feel organically invested in data science, in genomics, uh, in health disparities research. And they need to involve at some point uh, ability to use the cloud as a way of analyzing whatever data would come out of the projects. But really, other than that, we are inviting applicants to propose, uh, you know, different ways that this could be administered, this could be run. Uh, so really, we um, get creative with it. Uh, the, the reviewers will probably latch on to whoever has a really original idea there. Uh, Helen, is there any part of the question that I missed there? Well, NGRI does not have approval authority in that sense, but this is a cooperative agreement. So the hub awardee and NHGRI will probably work pretty closely in uh, making a final selection. But this is not a classical NIH award in the sense that NHGRI or ODSS or NIMHD would be the final uh, decision makers for who, who the opportunity funds get uh, given out to. Okay, and uh, if that didn't answer everything, like I said, please uh, send me whatever remains in an email. So Helen, we can move on to the next. Um, so the next question states that given the 12 page limit, uh, they anticipate providing robust detail on the multiple PI leadership plan and how they manage the coordination of the hub and the roles and the oversight of the multiple PIs. And then a briefer higher level overview in the leadership and program management section of the research strategy. So they're asking, is this a reasonable, uh, is that a reasonable strategy or would that be considered circumventing um, the page limits? Yeah, thank you, Helen. So this is once again a really uh, insightful, deep question. The reason we put many things in the main body of the research strategy and not as an attachment is that we really want the reviewers to be able to read, uh, even if it's in a shorter form than usual, the full extent of what uh, people are proposing. So I would say that a condensed strategy here might not go down well with reviewers. I know that reviewers like to see a little more detail, usually in management plans, especially for something as complex as the hub. But on the other hand, we know that 12 pages is a finite amount of space. So I, I invite you to strike a balance between not having a usual full length management plan versus going with something that would be considered too brief of an overview. Uh, I will invite my boss, uh, Valentina, who has much more experience than me in these things. Valentina, would you add anything to that answer? Or anyone else, uh, from the NIH team? Sure. Um, yeah, sure, Joe. I think you're absolutely right. I think that I, I will actually invite applicants to put all the information and comprehensive information in the part that gets reviewed thoroughly. So that would be in the uh, leadership and program management plan. Um, so just put everything in one place and make it easy on reviewers to find all the irrelevant pieces of your application about the management plan. Thank you, Valentina. 
Helen, I know we have a question for the All of Us program. Did that get answered or would uh, anyone from All of Us like to chime in and provide more detail than was in the typed answer? Minky? Um, I think we got all of the all of us questions, but if we didn't, Helen, please let us know. Yes, it does look like all of the all of us questions have been answered in the oh, chat. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So a couple of things, uh, as I mentioned, if you would like to ask a question by voice rather than text, uh, please raise your hand. Uh, Jeril or myself or someone here on the AV side will uh, will enable the audio connection for you. Uh, and also regarding the other partners, uh, as soon as we have that notice of participation, uh, I will send it out. So that should hopefully provide more context for what uh, NIMHD, ODSS and all, because I, I will remind attendees that each partner has unique but overlapping interests in what the hub is doing. So keep an eye out for that notice and that notice will have contact information for the other partners that you can directly send your questions to as well. Uh, thank you, Helen, back to you, next question. So the next question uh, had five embedded questions and it looks like you answered one in the chat, but there are four remaining. Uh, so the first of that would be, how much will the hub work with NHGRI to develop the target institutions FOAs? These questions are from Paul Kerr. Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, Paul, the site's funding announcement about all we know at this point is that we plan on using the R25 mechanism, even that may change, frankly, because the uh, cooperative agreement version of the R25 called the UE5 has, uh, has started being used since we developed the concept clearance. So sitting here today, all I can say is that we will learn from everything being done as we write that funding announcement. Now, I do need to work with others here at NIH and get that out quickly. So the hub will not be awarded by the time that we have in mind to publish the site's funding announcement. So I, I wish it were otherwise, I wish we could consult, but on the other hand, federal guidelines may prevent me from hearing anything from the hub on what to write into the sites. But short answer to that question is that we won't be able to work with the hub in any way on what we write into the sites. The timeline itself is against that. We need to get that funding announcement out early next year and the hub award will begin in spring of next year. So the time is, uh, is not feasible. Helen, what's next? So the next question, prior to target institutions being funded, should the hub set aside funds for students and faculty without access to adequate technology? Um, I will answer that with the yes, uh, you know, part of the objective here, and uh, I know that other partners here have their own cloud platforms as well. Uh, all of us, NIMHD, or DSS, of course, works with all of the clouds. The general NIH objective through the hub is to make sure that cloud computing is not something that gets uh, concentrated in research, resource rich uh, or research intensive institutions that we know will use the cloud anyhow. So I would see the hub as having a mandate to set funds aside uh, for cloud computing intro seminars or little cloud exercises by students at these uh, target institutions, the smaller institutions. But really, this is me speaking on behalf of the Anvil cloud platform at the Genome Institute. Uh, Debbie, um, anyone from all of us, Alison, would you like to talk about how you envision the hub using your clouds uh, with these students uh, in minority serving institutions? I can start. Um, and I, oh, hold on. Jill, can um, we NIMHD, you? sorry, I turned on my video. Yeah. NIMHD um, is developing a cloud now. And in our cloud, we have two oh. places that I see um, that participants can join here. Um, we have a, a collaboration network in order to do research. And we also have a collaboration network that will work on biases in algorithms and, and data science, artificial intelligence from data to implementation. This um, platform won't be available until fall of this year, but after that it um, 
we will welcome all participants to work with us. So I think the general answer to that question is a big yes. Uh, Ruben, uh, you have something to add? Yeah, just that for users of the uh, All of Us research uh, platform, there is an initial uh, $300 uh, com computational credit for any registered user uh, for the researcher workbench. Um, in addition, there's also uh, computational credits available for researchers that have a focus on COVID-19. Uh, and uh, this was noted in the in our response in the chat, but if, if your team feels that uh, some of these initial credits don't cover your work on the All of Us research platform, uh, if you uh, reach out to us at the email provided in the chat, uh, we'd be happy to follow up with you. Thank you, Ruben. Minky, something from you? Yeah, I just wanted to add um, and provide a little bit more detail in addition to our response in the chat. I think Charles Ray had uh, several questions. So our platform is open right now. We have over a thousand researchers registered on the workbench using our data. Uh, so you don't have to wait to be funded through this opportunity. We invite you to come and become a registered uh, user on the workbench to take a look at what data might be available so that you can uh, work on your application for this opportunity. Um, and we will put our engagement team's email address in the chat if we have not done so yet. So if you have any specific questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you, Minky. I will also point anyone on the webinar to the STRIDES program at NIH. Uh, STRIDES is NIH's way of lowering barriers to entry for cloud computing for research and educational use and strides credits uh, could be available uh, for people that are interested in using the cloud in an educational sense. So feel free to reach out to me or uh, anyone you see on the strides website. Uh, Helen, back to you. So the next question, the RFA lists the earliest start date as April 2023, but much pre-work needs to be done. What work will the hub be expected and funded to do prior to April 2023? Uh, that's a good one. Uh, no work at all. We cannot <laughs> require any work until we send you the notice of grant award. So you could start thinking about what to do, uh, you know, once review happens or once we have some sense of uh, who the awardees might be, there will be that window between someone getting reviewed and getting a notice of grant award. But really, until we issue that notice of grant award, uh, we, as from the federal perspective, we really cannot uh, ask the eventual awardee to do any work before then. So uh, feel free to have ideas forming up, but uh, there won't need to be any real work in a federally funded sense done before the award is made. Does that close out that set, Helen, or we have more in the five questions? One, one, one last from Paul. Yeah. Um, the RFA states meeting and travel costs should be specified, including budget for faculty and student travel to in-person events hosted at the hub location. Should those be included in the hub budget or subsequent target institutional budgets? Um, for anything the hub does, uh, let's, let's imagine that the hub hosts uh, cloud computing 101 workshop. What is the cloud? You know, what are the three or at least three major cloud providers. So this event for students at minority serving institutions across, I'm just gonna pull this one out, the deep south where I went to grad school. Uh, we will expect the hub to fund travel for a finite uh, but substantial number of students and faculty. So really the hub does need to include travel in its budget, uh, at least for some substantial number of people to come to these events. Or it could also include travel costs for hub members to go to locations and host these events there. But uh, we, we created the budget in a way where travel can be included in the hub's work. Okay, and one last question I have here. Um, can you speak to the balance between community building and awareness raising versus train the curriculum developer work for the hub? Yeah, I could speak and speak and speak. <laughs> So we, uh, when I say we, uh, I mean myself and other NIH partners that work on the genomic data science community network. Uh, what we have realized is that given how badly data science education or genomics education have not 
reached the level of uh, classroom diversity that we would like to, there is almost the need to build trust before doing any real educational content. Uh, the Genomic Data Science Community Network taught us that if anything, we spend one year uh, building these relationships, convincing faculty members at smaller institutions that we did care deeply and were sincere about introducing the cloud to them, uh, you know, giving them protected time for data science education. So the balance here would be a time vector in my sense. The first few months or the first year of the hub might be more about community building. And then uh, with the overlap area, maybe the second year will sort of gently and imperceptibly move over into creating content and delivering content. But at least in, in my personal experience and Valentina and others have joined me for that project, the first phase needs to focus on creating the community of institutions. And if you read the RFA, the hub funding announcement, we really put that as the earliest work involved. First, create trust. Uh, for too long, uh, you know, NIH has been perceived as uh, as maybe a federal entity in the DC area that funds research in, uh, in the high powered institutions. So the hub will need to first create trust before it starts uh, doing education. That it, it would be a pretty, pretty big mistake to assume that just build content and people will come to it just because it exists. So Helen, I guess that brings us to the end of questions that were typed in. That's the last typed question that we have here in the Q&A chat. Okay. Uh, I see one other just came in here. Yes. Can you describe any relationship between the Community Genomic Data Science Network and the Hub? Yeah, yeah. So the Genomic Data Science Community Network was an experiment or was a way for us to learn the extent of what needs uh, to be done here. Uh, you know, my mind goes back to two years ago when we started that. We knew that there was a disparity. We knew that it would take tons of work. And to be quite frank, we had no idea where to start or how to start. It would have been arrogance almost in a, in a sense for the federal government to assume that we knew what works best for teaching data science and genomics uh, in, in minority classrooms. So the community network, GDSCN, was our way of hearing from those members, assisted by our contractor the, at Johns Hopkins University. But really, there is a hard isolation between the GDSCN contract and what the hub is being asked to do. Uh, there, we learned a lot. I, I, I would say I wrote the hub, or me and others wrote the hub funding announcement, incorporating all of the knowledge that we got from the GDSCN contract but there is no link in an administrative sense. GDSCN was a contract. Uh, it, it had a separate administrative structure. The hub is a funding announcement, a grant, which is a completely different animal than a contract. And uh, there is no link between the one and the other. Okay, with that, I'm going to use, oh, we have questions still pouring in. So Helen, over to you. Next question, will the hub actually be building much teaching content explicitly, or will they rather be teaching the folks at the sites how to develop curriculum for the cloud? This is a insightful and wonderful question. Uh, the hub is not funded to build semester length courses. Uh, definitely that work belongs in the eventual sites announcement. Uh, the hub should not be uh, you know, feeling like it has to develop a four month genomics course with exams or um, graded exercises. On the other hand, when we say content, the hub could decide to build something that is a four hour introduction to cloud computing with uh, two hours of lectures followed by two hours of hands-on guided exercises. So some content, but definitely not content that would be teaching content in the university classroom sense. And uh, I'm happy this question probably needs, uh, needs more detail than I could give in the space of a few minutes, but feel free to reach out to me. But once again, it's hard to do what we are asking the hub to do without any sort of content. But on the other hand, the sites funding announcement will be the one where faculty members at minority serving institutions actually build classroom content using the cloud. So there's a distinction between 
hub content and sites content. So Joe, can I also add that sure. in this educational approach, we're also looking for creative and innovative ways to get people involved that have no background whatsoever. So it's not like just prepping for uh, data science 101. It's almost like pre 101. Yeah. And I see a last question. In sorry, Joe, I just, sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I just wanted to quickly address, I know there was a question about having to use the all of us data set. I think, of course, in our sort of interest, that would be wonderful, but it's not necessary for the entirety of this hub. Um, and I would say another thing in terms of what people should focus on in the first year, sort of that capacity building, building trust, also sort of figuring out what barriers um, are in terms of having trainees and students from underrepresented groups be part of this um, and be exposed to um, data science. I think that that's really important for us is to make sure that we're building a pipeline, but that it's a sustainable pipeline. So really the administrative infrastructure um, for the first year capacity building is really important to focus on that true engagement and I mean, at least for us, we're really excited that we already have a lot of partners that are working on different curriculums and trainings through our um, large ecosystem that we'll be able to sort of provide connections and support with that as well. Um, so I just um, wanted to sort of add that as well. Thank you so much. Uh, we are down to the last minute. I will thank everyone once again. I do really feel that between this hub and the eventual sites uh, over the next five years or so, we are in a position to make some real change here. Uh, thank you for your interest. Uh, feel free to connect afterwards with me or anyone else. And like I said, don't wait until the last day to submit uh, if you have an application plan. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Helen.